Hey, it's Stephen from the Bad Ideas Garage, and yes, this is the Range Rover. This got quite the buzz. Uh, this is a 2006 uh, Range Rover Sport HSE. Uh, there's Dale over there in the corner, and the first thing that we had to do with this when we first got it was uh, the air suspension died, which is probably not a surprise to anybody who's watching this video right now. So Dale's gone ahead and has replaced a lot of the suspension with coilovers, which is really cool. And so we're gonna be sharing a little bit of video of that and doing a little bit of a uh, review of what we got for this $1,000 Range Rover. Enjoy. All right, so we got this rig. The previous owner had already started dissecting the air suspension. It's kind of unfortunate. I would have actually preferred to, uh, to fix these, uh, but he'd already ripped out the pump, cut all the hoses, cut some wiring, and I've decided that odds are, unfortunately, they're just not gonna be fixed. Uh, so here's the rears. The rears actually looked okay and they seem to hold air. Uh, the fronts are leaking and shot and they're up there somewhere. There's a couple of downsides to moving to coils. Um, number one, you lose some warp ride quality. Not surprising. Uh, you also lose some height. Uh, here's the coil over compared to the air strided maximum suspension here. You lose about an inch of uh, potential lift, which is kind of unfortunate. And eventually I figure I'll have to probably make it up with strut blocks or some other way of lifting it. Nobody really makes a lift kit for this car, so I suspect it's going to be a little bit of cobbling and fabrication. Uh, but that's a later me problem. Uh, other than that, though, it's actually pretty straightforward. These kind of just drop out. Three bolts on top, one on the bottom. Really easy to get them out. Getting them in is actually a little bit more of a pain because the way the coils tend to hang up, and we'll show you that in a second. Uh, I've already installed it in the other three corners. We just have this last one to do, and then we'll uh, finally be able to drive this thing. The only thing I've managed to do is drive it five miles an hour on the, on the ground, which was uh, less than optimal. No air suspension in a 2006 Range Rover that's been um, well loved. That's a word for it. It's, loved, hated, all that. This is so bouncy and we're doing about two miles an hour. It's this good. Is, and random things are turning on. What could possibly go wrong? So fun, I was actually going to go show everyone how to get in. So I'm going to go, here we go. Uh, we actually don't really know too much about this besides that uh, it's got some screens that somebody decided to scratch some art on the uh, the headliner and then as you can see in the front uh, someone smashed that control screen so we did get this started we drove it around a parking lot uh, but we are going to be doing the suspension first and then we'll be making videos in the future to do a little bit more of a in-depth review of what do you get for a one thousand dollar very bad idea Range Rover so that's what we're going to be doing in the video today Okay, so this is the Range Rover Sport. This is not the same as the Range Rover. So this is an L320 versus an L332. This is a four drive platform. It's known as the T1. It shared, no, T5, my apologies. It shares parts with the T1, which is like the Expedition. Theoretically, we might be able to do lift kits based on some Expedition parts. I'm not sure on that yet. And then we're getting a lot of forum threads and getting a lot of conflicting information as per usual. Uh, but anyway, getting these things in here. The pattern is we kind of weird and offset, like this between here and here is shorter, but these are longer. It's only going to go in one way, and it's never quite clear how it's going to fit. Uh, but you got to get the bottom in first, and it's going to hang up on everything. That's what we did the first time on the hoses, the brakes, the clips, you name it. And you kind of get to work it around into the shock mount, which is not straightforward. And the CV axles. It can be done. Uh, the fronts kind of just drop in, these ones don't. It's a lot of bending and twisting and kind of rotating it and until you find just the right angle. Like right there, sort of got it, but I'm not quite right. Yeah, these ones are fun. Um, like I said, they came out really easy and the fronts went in really easy. The rear's a lot more of a pain in the arse. Well, Dale's working on the rears, here's what the fronts look like. And it's really easy, slid right on in. You look good. Oh, control arm. That makes things a little bit easier. All right, control arm's back in. Oh, that looks like a, that looks like a coilover that's in place. All right, there we go. First time actually sitting, uh, you know, bagging on the, on the ground. What improvement? I hear that that's helpful to be able to drive it. And it's definitely a bonus. All right, Dale. How does one get into this? Well, the uh, door handle is still in shipping at the moment. So we're going to get into the back door again. Okay, have fun. did arrive today. I've got the new diagnostic cable, which is great. Cool. So we can look at the computer eventually. Ah, 
And it's still a little bit of a challenge. Okay, let's see if it still starts after being sitting for a week. Alright, what do you think, Dale? Well, there's a Christmas tree of warning lights on the dash. Um, there's also zero gasoline, uh, so that's a, that's a thing. Oh, the rear wiper keeps moving, and I'm not entirely sure how to turn it off yet. Alright, cool. Uh, let's, uh, let's get a funnel and throw a little gas in this car. I'm literally afraid it's going to run out and uh, on test drive. Max speed 30 miles an hour, Correct. HDC fault, system unavailable. Dale, Dale, are you worried? Dale's not worried. Uh oh, not premium. Oh no. Max speed 30 miles an hour, Correct. HDC fault, system unavailable. Dale, Dale, are you worried? Dale's not worried. Yeah, let's check to make sure reverse works. Oh! Yeah, reverse works. It's a pump rolling around. Okay. <laughs> I was like, is that, you know, pieces of suspension that we just tried to... No. Let's pump guys take out through the back seat. All right. Going for a tumble. On well, the max speed of 50, uh, 30 miles an hour, we have exceeded. It's more of an advisory than a requirement, you know? Rear wipers on, don't know why. It's actually not bad in here whatsoever. A little topsy-turny, which is probably to be expected with coils. Lots of fun noises coming from the dashboard. The warning lights. The engine and transmission are fine. Steering seems fine. Electronics are freaking out. It's really warm in here. <laughs> are the wipers still on? Doesn't seem like it. Technically not. All right, we've mostly shut it up. All right, now that we've driven for a little bit, let's see what else we can find in the screen here. <gasps> <That's> stereo. <laughs> Shows how often I work with Range Rovers. I don't know what any button does. That just resets things. How do I actually move anything else around on the screen? Command, something command. Oh, so is that voice command? Yeah, that's voice command. Okay. This is call. But there's no, there's no phone module. Damn it! That just went again. How do we turn the bloody wipers off? Okay, push forward. That seems to shut it up. Oh god, the car is dirty. I doubt any of these will do anything, and since we can't see the screen, I guess is yeah, system fault. No programs available until the system faults are clear. Until we figure out how to reprogram the suspension, um, it probably doesn't know much. Can we go into low gear? No. No, low gear is not available to me at the moment. Select neutral for range change. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, there we go. I, I felt a I felt that switch. Low range is oh. selected. Oh yeah, we're in low Oh, range. yes we are. <laughs> Lovely, okay, so the important parts for off-roading are in fact functional. Okay, and it, it. and it turned, oh, that's Great. good. <laughs> we're gonna slow road trip home, we're taking the, uh, the gravel all the way back. Uh, brake light is on, but the brakes are not on. It's probably like a brake wear sensor is going Or off. low brake fluid? Um, no, brakes feel good. We won't know until I get a, a, a sensor on this thing. I got the computer, so we'll, we'll learn a lot more okay. soon. Okay, so engine transmission seem happy. It is not overheating. Right on the middle of the gauge now. So engine runs good. So it's parking sensors, has the windshield wiper fluid, but who knows how to get that on. I think it'll clean up decently well. These are definitely plasti dipped. It's not that bad whatsoever. Her uh, seatbelt keys a little bit of clean, Steven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tasty. Just got good again. I get up and go, though. Yeah, it feels like it. Drives good. Is it? <laughs> is, it is it stuck? Because it's at 3,000 RPM. Is that its third gear? I'm in drive. So maybe that's the limitation. Could be. Yeah, the RPMs just seem high. I mean, it's shifting fine. Sport. I'm in fourth, there we go. Okay. Uh, I have to override it at the moment. Okay. I'm in like third. Now I'm in fifth. Sixth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. 
surface is going to be starting in approximately five minutes. Interesting. I put it back in drive and it didn't shift out of six. Interesting. Learning all sorts of things about the way they program this. It's just gonna stay in third or fourth gear. Play like slap shift now. Drop it back over, and then it's good with back to the program. That's interesting. We don't do that, it's really unbalanced. So we just made it back to the Bad Ideas garage in our $1,000 Range Rover after its maiden voyage. Our next step is to plug in a diagnostic computer to see if it can forget that it had air suspension and we can run the coilovers without having the lovely airline noises and random other warning lights on the dash. That's coming up in our next video. Here's a preview. Day two of the Range Rover Bad Ideas garage and we have plugged external power to plug in the diagnostic cable. So we got that yesterday. Yesterday, and we're going discovery the floor is wet <laughs> why is the floor wet <laughs> okay we i didn't even get through my my opening and we're already having troubles trying to plug in the diagnostic cable into our bad ideas range rover <laughs> 